Today on the 1911 Syndicate, we are gonna do something that we rarely do here. We're gonna be budget friendly. Because not all rifles require aim point level of robustness, right? And not all the time do you wanna drop $800 on a red dot. This is true, my friend. So join us, everyone, on this journey as we show you seven red dots under 500 bucks. Talking about dots. Dots, seven of them. And ones that are gonna be more budget friendly today. I think that you guys will uh, appreciate this. Yeah, get some value yeah. out of this. It's rare that we do videos like this. I'll give you <laughs> you my, my uh, sort of categories of how I, I, I look at red dots, right? There's the high-end Gucci stuff. We got T2s, T1s, Leupolds, yeah, things of that sort. I throw Eotex in there. I mean, I, I still count Eotex as a red dot. Um, even though it's its own thing. You're gonna get roasted for that? I don't know, I count it as a red dot. It's, I don't give a shit, you say whatever you want to me. I don't know you, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever. And then there's really, on the opposite end of the spectrum, there's really cheap stuff. The Bushnells, the yeah. NC Stars. Yeah, the, stu like the stuff, stuff you're getting you on like gun Amazon. Shows. Yeah, Amazon, gun, gun shows, shows yeah. where it's like, hey look, in my opinion, there's zero credibility of you depending your life on something like that. No, that's what you buy for your son's Nerf. Gun. Yes, or like you're literally just like, hey, look, we go camp once a year and we want to shoot a couple rounds on our air. Go for it, dude. Knock yourself out. Uh, but like not in any sort of defensive capacity. No, to, to bet your life on, no. Absolutely not. And then there's this mid-tier of, let's call it, you know, in that four to $500 sort of sweet spot where I think you actually get a lot for your money. Nowadays? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, five, six years ago, I'd argue that. Nowadays? I think it's fair. I think so. I think so. And yeah. so we're gonna run through seven different options. Um, just keep in mind, this is like brief thoughts on each of these. A few of these, um, we do have dedicated videos on. So if you wanna see like a full length review, you can go do that. But generally speaking, these will be uh, brief thoughts. But you know what else applies to everyone? What's that? Belts. Belts, because we all wear belts. And if you don't, you're probably a psychopath. Psychopath. The belts you should be wearing, and if you don't wear a belt, the belt you are going to order after this, is this belt right here, the Seguera belt. You see it? Can you see it? Right there. Yeah, Crispy, you saw it. It's just above his peepee. -pee. You got you got a, oh, you yeah. got a cigar? Oh, he's got a cigar yeah, too. Right We're there. both wearing the light inner belt, which we can put a battle belt on top of. They make the emissary belt, which is a little more stiff. Yeah, that's where I got my those, range back. For, for yeah. some of those dudes that like stiffness. And then they got the battle wagon, which is their battle belt. This so um, 1911 will save you 10%. 10%. 10%. Except it's 1911 syndicate. Dang, I messed that up. Sorry guys, 1911 syndicate, all lowercase, no spaces will save you 10%. All right, let's start with the Aimpoint Duty RDS. We have done a full review of this, ironically, in this exact same location. Yeah, we're just missing our friend Austin. Austin, we miss you. Um, so, we're gonna give you some uh, basics on each of these. So basic uh, MSRP is $4.99, so right at the threshold of the budget. What is interesting, which is almost weirdly unique about this, is that that actually seems to be what they sell for. <laughs> Like on the black market, yeah, it was a, it was a fly. Yeah, like a horse. It, um, well, 
Yeah. yeah. Um, um, like on the black market or you just mean the open market? Open market. Okay. Typically, most of these dots, as I found up here, we're going to try to give you like real street prices. Um, you know, most of them, it's like, hey, if it's if it sells for, if it's MS, MSRP's 500, it goes for like 400. These like sell for exactly the MSRP. Just weird. Yeah, just yeah. weird. But, you know, awesome. so, you know, just is what it is. So this is Aimpoint's mid-tier uh, duty red dot. It's just a two MOA dot, yeah. meaning there are no multiple reticles. Much of what we have out here today, probably the majority of it, has multiple reticle yep. options. Yeah. Okay. So is that a pro or a con for the Aimpoint? I don't it, know. It, it depends, depends who you are. Yeah, it depends what you're into, yeah. you know? But a few things. Same footprint as the Micro Series, aka T T1, T2, uh, Comp M5, stuff like that. You're talking same footprint, not overall, but for mounting. For mounting. Perfect. Right? So yeah. there's a lot of different mounting options for the duty rds this one is on a battle arms um mount i don't know that we're getting <laughs> sent more mounts from battle arms uh <laughs> sorry uh it does come with a factory uh from main point uh lower one third mount it's okay it, it's adequate um it's not anything mind-blowing or anything but you know it's adequate this of note is uh the the, the duty rds sits slightly sits slightly higher than a T2, meaning that if you were to do like a unity mount on this versus a unity mount on a T2, this will be taller. A little bit taller. You know, yeah. so I would recommend that probably the sweet spot for those of you that like a tall mount is probably 193. Okay, this is a 193 Fair. and it feels closer sure. to that like 212, I believe is a unity. Sure. Um, so just heads up, I probably wouldn't go like full send on, on like a unity height, you know, anything over two, I think you're gonna be pushing it a little bit there. Uh, the dot is very lightweight, 3.8 ounces without the mount. Uh, does have lower battery life than a T2, uh, it's different battery type, so it's uh, 30,000 hours is what they rate it. I'm <laughs> gonna tell you this, uh, virtually any industry-wide battery hour count that you hear is horseshit because that it is at a brightness level that is completely unusable in anything other than low light, no light. Yeah, okay. I think we all know that by now. We do. We should. But people start going 100,000 hours and it's like, it's not. It's not. You, I think what that implies though is then on the actual setting, you're still gonna get more. It is. Correct. And that is completely correct. Sure. But I'm saying some people are out there thinking they're getting 10 years on full brightness. It's like, bro, you ain't. You ain't. No. Ain't gonna happen, okay? So um, here's something interesting, and, and we're gonna do the first three dots on this series in a very particular order, right? The three, the three of the ones that I'm doing for a, a particular purpose. But here's something of note, 18 millimeter aperture, okay? okay. Just Meaning the hole. Yeah, the hole that you're looking down, 18 millimeter aperture, okay? okay? So we just need to remember that. Some complain that the buttons are susceptible to getting hit and involuntarily moved. I don't see that being an issue. Um, I would argue it's just as, the chance is just as high as you hit accidentally hitting your safety selector. Yes. Um, it falls very much in the category for me for shit that gun guys say that don't have a lot of experience um, versus the things that actual shooters notice. Sure. I hate to break it in. I know that's a snarky comment, but it's like a lot of people point out shit where like, well, this could happen. Do you have one? Do you shoot it? No. Then, you know. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Then like stay in the basement. You know what I'm saying? Um, so anyway, there's that. Snarky. Sorry, we move on. Some complain about a blue tent. I would say <sighs> get a life. <laughs> also snarky comment. No, um, that's one of the things that drives me. It's so stupid. Insane. There's another red dot we're going to talk about where that's everyone's biggest complaint. And you know what I'm looking at when I shoot through a red dot? The target. And the red dot? No, the target. Because sure. you stay target focused. Yeah. So guess what goes out the window? The blue tin in the fucking window. Yeah, it's it's a, such yeah, a non-issue that thing. people linger on. Unless you're literally looking through a blue lens, everyone chill out. You know what I'm saying, though? Yeah. I do wish, critical, uh, critical thinking here, I wish the caps were different. One, I wish they were either covered um, or don't make it so... <laughs> here's the irony. Mm. You either need a Torx wrench or an aim, aim point cap. Well, here's the thing. It don't come with aim points caps because they're uncovered. So hang on, so I'm gonna either take an aim point cap off of an aim point, but they can't actually attach to this, or I gotta take a little wrench with me. Weird. What's well, the aim point tool that it ships with? Yeah, but it's like, I like being able to adjust something on the fly with either a shell casing or taking a cap off, sure. and that has the adjustment. Sure. This is like, hey, I've gotta have a tool sure. on me to do this. That's actually a good, good point to make. Yeah, is it nitpicky? Sure. Um, but again, we try to bring you guys critical thought on this stuff. Overall, I've had it for about 10 months. I've had no issues on it. I like it. I would buy it again. Um, but we'll talk about a couple other dots that are competitors. Have you left it on that whole time? No. 
Although that rainbow was magical the other night. Yeah. That thing was, that was very special. Cool. I've that never seen special. something like that, man. That was wild, man. Moving on from uh, the uh, the duty RDS, we got the Trigicon MRO. Now this is far from a new dot. Don't think, you know, we don't know that. We understand it's been around for a long ass time. Yeah, that's not the video. It's comparison of seven red dots on the market. Yeah, and just, hey, here's some different options. So basics. Um, I'm gonna tell you something that's probably gonna surprise you. I've come to realize I would take an MRO over that duty RDS. And I'm going to tell you why, and it's going to be almost un undeniable. Window. Once I break it down. Uh, there's a couple of different things. Go right? ahead. So here's one. Uh, price on these, I broke our rule on this. The MSRP on these ranges from like 596 to 658 based on the model. Street price, what, 420 all day long. So ironically. Um, so Was that ironic? I don't know, just 420. I don't know. Just I went into like some sort of stoner thing or something. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I don't know what, what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Um, so they sell for under 500. Okay. So I'm giving you real pricing versus MSRP because MROs don't sell for the MSRP. It's two MOA dot. There's no multiple reticles unless you get the HD model. That one's never quite gotten won me over to want to buy one. Um, so, hey, this and the Aimpoint are great competitors. They're both two MOA dots from big name reputable companies. Here's the deal. Knob instead of buttons. Would I prefer to have the knob instead of buttons? Yeah. Why? If I'm taking my pick, one, because that is friendly to a lefty or a righty. It's completely neutral territory. Good job. Right? Uh, and it's not going to get hit. Like, that's not going to, if you're going to play that game of what if the buttons get hit accidentally. But you just talk shit to people that use that as an excuse, no, 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 but I'm saying if, bitch. If, I'm saying if you're going to play that game. You're you, not playing that game. I'm not playing okay. the game. But okay. I'm saying if you were going to, cool, problem solved. You got okay. a knob now, right? Knobs are good. Okay. I like a knob. It's part of the reason I like the T2s and shit like that. You, yeah, they're just, they're secure. The nubbins. Yeah, I'm not worried about the buttons, I'm just saying. Um, so I also like that along the brightness settings, there's multiple off positions. Yeah, yeah. You have the beginning off, the middle off. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. you've got like a beginning and a middle point mm -hmm. off. I like that because, it, you know, does it save me so much time from having to power all the way through? Not at all. It's Is just it a nice. feature that I would like to have? Sure. sure. Great feature to have. I didn't know that was an option until this came out, right? Check this out. 18 millimeter aperture on that, 25. Yeah. That's a third bigger window. It is a bigger window. That is a one third bigger aperture on that. That's pretty significant actually. Yeah. So when you objectively look at this, you go, look, that will wind up being a faster dot. Sure. Because you simply have a bigger tube you're looking down. Sure. Right? So I think that that tells you something. The adjustments they take will take a flathead or a shell casing versus a tool that I need to bring out. Yep. I can adjust that right now with a rock if I need to. No problem. They're uncovered. Do I really care about that? Not really. No. And especially given that, again, it's like flathead, shell casing, whatever. No problem. Yeah. Cool. That's a win. Um, slightly better battery life. Not enough to split hairs over, but marginally better battery life. Okay. Um, it has the uh, same amount of daylight settings as the Duty RDS, just for the comparison sake. So it's six daylight settings. Uh, okay. Nothing really changes there. Marginally heavier at 4.1 ounces instead of 3.8. Not enough that anyone's going to notice. Again, some people complain about the blue tint. I say, get a life. Um, and uh, there is a green dot option of this. I think I've sold mine on a gun that I wound up selling, but definitely get the red over the green. The green dot battery life on the MRO is literally like 20% of mm -hmm. what the red dot is. I mean, literally it plummets like 80%. It's just the LED takes more energy or something? I guess. Yeah. I, I think red is just the lowest uh, power usage needed to, to illuminate it okay. or some shit like that. Um, but I was like, whoa. It, I mean, the battery life is atrociously bad. on, on Yeah, the no go on that. MRO. Um, so I'll just say this. Hey, look, I've owned multiple MROs over the years. Uh, this is on an MP5. I've had MROs on AKs. And for those of you that are like, hey, are they durable or whatever? Well, look, I've had MROs on an Ultimac rail on, on AKs for years, which means it's right over the gas tube, which means that rail gets hot as shit. Yeah. And on AKs, you're running low mounts. AKA, again, the dot is very close to the heat source. Sure. It's not like it's two inches above it or something. It's like, no, no, no. Like the dot is right on by it. the damn thing. Yeah. And it's like, I've had no issue Issues. I've never killed one. I've never had a noticeable shift in zero, anything like that. Cool. MRO, going through this process, made me go, I realize I actually really like MROs. Yeah, yeah. It, it, they're kind of like not my thing just because of aesthetics, mm -hmm. but I've owned several. I still own several. And like, yeah, I don't know. It's a good dot. 
It is a good dot. So uh, before we move on, uh, if you guys are looking for any ways to support the channel, go to 1911syndicate.com. We'll also have the Patreon link below, but on 1911syndicate.com, you can uh, hopefully connect the dots. We're a real estate company. We work all over the country. He's down in Phoenix, I'm in Utah, um, and we've got agents in a bunch of different places. A great way to educate yourself on a weekly basis is sign up for the newsletter, uh, which you can just do on the website there. And we will have a cool weekly newsletter that goes out that's just gonna teach you the very basics of what you should know that's happening in the world of real estate and finance and shit like that right now. So go check that out. So SIG Red Dots, I, I have a feeling people probably sleep on SIG Red Dots a little bit. I'm one of them. There you go. Okay, yeah. cool. Like I, when you told me you were doing this, I made fun of you. I was like, what? Yeah. So educate me. Yeah. Well, one, yeah. don't make fun of me. Um, two, I'm going to tell you about the damn thing. Okay. So <laughs> here we go. So this is the Romeo 4T. Um, MSRP, again, I broke my own rule, is 689 but they sell for... 430 to 500. Okay. Okay. So in terms of what you guys are going to pay, you're going to pay within the $500 window that we're talking about here. There are, in true SIG fashion, um, SIG likes to release a ton of different models of everything that they have, right? And their red dots are no different. Uh, there are a lot of different options for their red dot models. And then within those models, there's different models that come with different reticles. So you're gonna have to really sort of narrow down to what it is that you're looking for. What I can tell you is this one is the, so it's the Romeo 4T and it's the two MOA ballistic circle dot. Okay, that is the one that I've got. It comes with four different reticle options. You got a two MOA dot, you've got a BDC, if you hold down one of those buttons, you'll start to cycle Yeah, I'm trying through. to cycle through them right now. Yeah. So uh, you've got a two MOA dot that's very crisp, actually, almost like I can't quite figure out why, but it, to my eye, it looks more crisp than a lot of the other red dots. Can't tell you why, but it just does. Um, you've got a BDC setting. So it's basically a string of either three or four dots. The reason I say three or four is I can't actually make it out. If you've got an astigmatism, uh, you're gonna have a tough time making out the BDC. Cause again, you don't have any magnification. If you were to throw a magnifier or something behind this, it's gonna become a lot easier. The BDC, for those of you with shitty eyesight is gonna get a little dicey. For those of you with good eyesight, you're gonna be like, hell yeah, man, I got a built-in BDC on my, my red dot. Then you've got basically, what is the EOTech reticle, right? You got the donut of death, 65 MOA, two MOA dot in the middle. And then you're gonna have what in essence is the EOTech reticle with a BDC in it. Okay. Okay. Which is interesting. I hadn't cool. seen that anywhere else before. Yeah. So you could use the 65 ring up close and then BDC out the distance. Yeah. And punch some distance yeah. out. So I do think that this is a win over the MRO and the, uh, the duty RDS, uh, when it comes to multiple reticles. Would I like to have multiple? Yeah, I would. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Do you change them up? Uh, sometimes I run the EOTech one. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it just depends. A lot of times it's just the dot. The, you know, occasionally I'll, I'll get a little spicy and I want the EOTech reticle. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's how I do. But um, I've been enjoying this a lot more than I, I thought I, I would. Um, uh, although I, I really shouldn't even say that because I've owned multiple and still actually currently sitting in my safe have multiple SIG red dots. Um, I've owned them for years. They're just a little dated, which is why I wanted to buy current gen and just kind of see what's up. But uh, you get a lot of value for the money. So 20 millimeter aperture on this. So again, if we recap, we go 18 on the duty RDS, right? 20 on this and then 25 on the MRO. So this sits right in between those two. Duty RDS starts to look a little tough on paper once you start actually going to apples to apples, right? And then some of the other things with like, hey, it's, you know, it's just a dot, like the adjustments for windage elevation sure. are a little bit more proprietary. You go, man, I don't know, that's lower battery life sure. than these other two. Sure. It starts You're to making an argument, bit, yeah. right? So this also has solar, um, which, uh, and also most motion activation. So it'll shut off after a certain period of time. Once it feels motion, it comes back on. So I would take this with a big grain of salt, but combining the battery and the solar and the motion activation and everything, SIG's rating it at 100,000 hours of battery life. That's 11 years, boys and girls. Um, who the hell even knows the planet Earth's gonna be around 11 years? I, I give it 11 days at this point. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but you definitely do get long battery life given the combination For of sure. features there. You got covered turrets, cool, great. Would I prefer to have that? Yeah, if possible. Sure. Just why, why the hell not, you know? Just protect the, you know, protect everything. Um, it does come with a 
So it does come with two different, uh, it, it's one mount, but you can run it either as a co-witness or a lower one third. Oh, cool. It's basically like a little riser that you add if you want to go to, oh, to cool. lower one third. So, hey, that that is actually a pretty nice little feature there. Uh, it's an aim point micro footprint. So again, beautiful, compatible with tons of different mounts, right? Smart. Um, okay, so here's a big point in favor of this. I mean, I mean, for me, this is legitimately a big point in favor of this. 10 daytime brightness settings, okay? So I'm all the way up right now. Mm -hmm. I can see it going one, two, three, four, five, six. I, I lose it right there. Yeah, well, in bright desert conditions. Correct, yeah, they know that. Yeah, yeah. we're just talking yeah. out loud here. Yeah, I've done it in my house. Yeah. I mean, there's there's 10 settings. But so here's why it matters. The brightest setting is gonna be about as bright as any of this other stuff, right? It's yep. not that the brightest setting is just insane or anything, but here's why it matters. You know where I'm going with this? No, I don't. Okay, so here's why I care about multiple brightness, as many brightness settings within the brightness range as possible. Fucker. Um, so um, one, when zeroing, when I've got six daytime brightness settings, the truth is, man, maybe three of them can I even see in the daytime. And when I'm zeroing, it's a very specific thing that I'm doing in that moment, sure. right? To quote, you know, Mike, we're calibrating, you know, this machine Machines, here, the dot right. to the machine. And so you want your dot, is, or, <laughs> you know, you, you want your dot um, as as low as possible. What's the other word you said, dike? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, th I think that <laughs> slipped out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, you want your dot as low as possible because you don't want that dot obscuring the target when you're aiming at this very, very small target zone. So the more options I have to keep going lower while still seeing my dot, that's a good thing I'll give you from that. a precise zero perspective. Sure. You know where it also matters is once we start getting into either indoor or low light conditions or yeah. rapidly changing light conditions. Sure. We're like, man, I don't need to go from like, this to this, it's like, man, okay, it's just getting cloudy, sun's starting to set. Can I just like step it down ever so Ratchet slightly? Ratchet a little bit down. So look, to me, the 10 bright, I, I know I'm lingering on this, but it's like, it is a very good thing sure. to have, you sure. know? And it's like, it is what it is. So I, I will tell you this, much to my surprise, between the SIG, the Trigicon, and the aim point, the one I'm most likely to buy again is that. See, and I, you know, I, I don't know anyone that runs them. So I was like, are they reliable, yada, yada, yada. And then after we started planning this video, I've heard a rumor, I've never been able to confirm it. There's probably no way to confirm it, that it's made similarly or in the same factory as Hollow Sun. I believe there's something to that. There's something like that. Yeah. 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 Which, if that's the case, I run Hollow Sun, so I guess there's a Hollow Sun with SIG on it. Now again, speaking out of my ass here, I can't confirm yeah. 100%, but I have heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, that was the surprise hit of this video for me. Like, I, I've actually really loved that dot, and I'll probably buy cool. more of those. Maybe I'll snag one and uh, see if I can't break it. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. All right, moving on. Cool. All right, Jake. So, now my turn. You can shut the hell up. I okay. will. We got the um, Hollow Sun AIMS, which stands for, do you know what that acronym is? I actually have no clue. Advanced Enclosed Micro Sight. Rock on. Cool. Um, street price for this, three ninety nine. dollars Okay. So, well within our budget. Okay. Right? Um, this is, again, not new to the market, been out for a while, right? We're just two comparing years. Yeah, it's about two multiple years dots, yeah. right? 775 aluminum. Um, we got a 1.63 height or lower one-third co-witness. Same thing, okay? Weight coming in at 3.9 ounces, so. Almost spot on with the aim point yeah. duty. Yeah. Very, very, very light. With no is... mount, I'm assuming, yeah. Um, it would have yes, to be, guaranteed yes, it's yep, no mount. Yeah, yeah no mount. Um, and then this is a closed emitter. Yes. Which is nice, right? Um, closed emitter is something that's really kind of hot on the market right now. A lot of people are going to closed emitter stuff for even pistol dots, right? So it is a nice feature. Because not all of these that we're going to run through today are closed emitter. Yeah, I think which, there's one that's not. Which is why I brought it up. Yeah. So um, it has its own footprint, which is slightly annoying. Mm, okay. Here, though, here's the, the difference. I uh, did some Google research when we were doing the research on these, and you can buy adapter plates to run on other mounts. Okay. So if you wanted to throw this on like a, uh, let's say works Unity, works. Yeah. yeah, there'll be adapter plates that you can you can buy for those. Okay. So, and there's actually aftermarket companies doing that. Okay. So. Okay. Kind of cool. Yeah. Gives you a couple options. Um, we got a two MOA dot with your 65 MOA donut of death, if you would like that, because this has their MRS system, which stands for what? Multiple reticle system. Nailed it. Nailed it. Good job, Jake. Yeah. Good job. Solid. Yeah. Um, on this, and again, uh, the previous dot to this, you you kind of hit this point, 12 daytime settings. Oh man, I like okay. that. 12. And then I believe uh, four, night, four night vision, right? Oh, that's pretty good too. Which is pretty good, which you don't really need night vision settings, that's 
different argument, but just daytime settings. It's really all you need. I'm tracking. So, yeah. Um, I have put on this one, we're at a couple hundred rounds. I've shot a couple others on other people's guns through the last couple years. And everyone I know, including myself, I don't really have anything negative to say. I like that it has these so, little windows. Yes, these sacrificial little, caps, like, right? Yeah. That was going to be in kind of my afterthoughts of like final thoughts because it, it's a detail that some people like. Like, you know how aim points come with caps? I take them off. I don't run any caps. I take those off. Yeah, I don't run any caps on any of my optics. So yeah. I just take them all off. Yeah. Um, I do like that it has that because even though that may not necessarily be for me, a lot of people on the market would like that. Yeah, it just depends on the cap and how usable that cap is. The ones on my SIG, I, I've left those on. They're, they're solid. Like, yeah, they, like they, they're they're causing no issues. The aim point ones, yeah, they're a little, little dicey. A little dicey? Yeah. Well, I usually just uh, tear them off. Another good thing about this, too, is uh, it does have their solar system. So we can run it off a battery. Solar system. Or throw it on your solar system, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> what, you don't like that? I don't, just, I think of, you know, solar, solar system. system. <laughs> solar system. Yeah. One thing, too, a uh, very similar battery, like uh, a lot of optics. This runs on a 2032. Indeed. And we got a side tray here. That, that loads into which i i do like yeah, yeah um yeah. your standard like tools that come with optics we'll just unscrew those pop it out put it in good to go yep um with the combination of obviously the battery and the solar system yeah, yeah. It's, it's gonna bother me for now on um you you could probably get a lot more battery life out of that just sure. by switching between the both yeah right? and it might have that shake wake thing i don't know but, it does yeah. it does yep that was one of my last points it yeah. does have the shake wake um, I've never been able to sneak up on one and see if it's off because even a little slight movement, like they're sensitive. I, All my holocysts. I, I uh, actually ex every day uh, see mine come back to life because I have a 507 on my bedside pistol. So you look down and then no, touch so, it? No, so what happens is in the morning I wake up because it's dark in the room, right? And, and I can see, w w when the dot comes on, you can see it. You can see a little green illumination and it's green on, on my bedside one. Yeah. And um, so I'll look over, my alarm will go off, I'll see that it's dark over there. As soon as I touch my phone that's on the chair to just hit the alarm off, I see the green light up. Just from that? Huh? Oh, it works. Like, oh. I mean, I can verify. I, I see cool. it every single morning. Um, I thought I had on here the window size. Yes, I do. Uh, 1.1 by 0 0.87. Okay. Okay. So good. Sure. Good on that. Great. Um, final thoughts for me. Good battery life. Um, I like that it has the sacrificial clear lenses if you, if you'd like. Buttons. I don't see them accidentally getting hit just like the RDS or anything else. Again, um, that's something people could nitpick about. I don't really think it's that big of a deal. Adjustments. You can use a tool or a spent casing, which again, we like that, right? So when you're on the range, you can adjust it. And I think much like all Hollow Sun products right now, um, they're just putting out good stuff. There's no, I think you're, there's money well spent, much like the other Hollow Sun products we've run on the channel for years now that people can see the track record of. I expect this to have the same track record. And I, uh, the only thing I'm gonna change on this is uh, get a different mounting plate and throw it on like a Unity. Cool. So other than that, Jake, that's all I got for you on the aims. Right on, moving cool. on. Moving on. Okay, let's talk about primary arms here. I flubbed the last take of this. Uh, so the one on this Rifle Dynamics AK is the SLX MD25 Gen 2. Whew, okay? it's a mouthful. It's a mouthful, okay? It's the cheapest dot in the series coming in at 200 bucks. Wow. And that's pretty damn inexpensive, right? Yeah. Uh, 200 bucks is like, you know, we're, we're, we're really in the budget territory yeah. at that point. I noticed our homie Gatman was running that today too. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, one thing uh, I will say about this, uh, in the event that you guys wind up, uh, you know, buying primary arm stuff, uh, we do have a link below. It's an affiliate link. Like if you guys click on that, um, you know, basically, hey, that helps uh, support the channel. So help the homies. In the event you guys decide that you uh, ever want to buy this stuff, there's a link down there you guys can use and support the channel. So uh, some thoughts on this. So this is the ACSS reticle advanced combat sighting system. I, b I believe is what ACSS stands for. Uh, they do also have a version that's just a two MOA dot. So if you just want a dot, you can do that. If you want the ACSS, do that. Personally, on this, I probably I actually really uh like the acss reticles um like i actually really like the, the reticle in this thing um that would if you're going to do something a little bit different i would say yeah I'd, I'd probably do that um it's fast as hell i can tell you that much right but um we'll get into it so 25 millimeter aperture so this is uh right there with the trigon mro so yeah. if you're just going, hey, you know, what's, you know, what are the fastest ones out here from a red dot perspective? You know, this and, and the MRO are probably the two biggest windows sure. in terms of tubes, at yep. least. The other ones are 
a little bit different. So um, for uh, precision, if you have an astigmatism, the, the little uh, reticle that winds up getting pretty specific to ACSS with different holds and stuff, you're gonna have a tough time making out specific details within that. What you're gonna wind up with is, hey, you got your big horseshoe and you got a chevron in that, like that's where you're gonna do all your yeah. work. Like, you know, um, so just kind of a heads up for those of you like myself who might just have kind of shitty eyesight there is an auto on off feature, they call it auto live. So it's the same thing, right? Like a shake, shake awake. awake or, you cool. know, whatever motion sensitive kind of deal there. There's 11 brightness settings. Two of them are for night vision and then the other nine are for daytime. So cool. that's solid. I think it's probably all the way up right now. So you could probably verify. It is. Completely adequately bright. Oh, um, plenty bright. Well, yeah. I could go down. Like you got plenty of uh, brightness on this to run. And again, bright desert daylight conditions here. So if you're just wondering, uh, is it going to be as bright as like some of the big hitters out there? Yeah, it is. Um, which is, you know, pleasant surprise there. 12,000 hour battery life. That's at a medium set. I don't know how they define medium, um, but at a medium setting, 12,000 hour battery life. Uh, so it's going to be lower than some of the other stuff. Is it a big deal? Not if you keep it on top of your gear. It's not, yeah. um, you know, like replace attention. batteries on your birthday. Yeah. And, and like, look straight up, I turn my dots off when I'm not using them. Like it's not that hard. Like, and part of that, Hey, look, if you've only got two guns, I get it. You might leave them on. Not that that's a small amount of guns, fellas. Don't take that the wrong way. But I'm just saying, if you have a larger collection, you know, you're probably just going to turn your dots off. Cause you're like, I don't need 30 dots on all the time. You know, it's kind of, kind of overkill. You know what I mean? So, um, it's a little bulky. Uh, it's a little bulkier. Probably the bulkier, probably the bulkiest of the actual like with legit red dot stuff. options. Again, the knob I'm fine with. Um, and, yeah, it you just know, sticks out cover, a little more. Cover turrets with the adjustment uh, on the turret. So like I'm good with all that. It is just a little bit of a bigger footprint. Uh, it comes with a pretty good mounting system actually. So on the mount that it's on, you can run it at four different heights. You can go 0.96, 1.41, 1.54, or 1.64. With those plates? Yeah. Yeah. So you basically are just stacking little riser plates so you can find the height that you want. On the uh, AK here, I believe I've got it at 141. AKs, you typically run your dots a little lower. lower. Yep. Um, so I think I'm at the 141. It is an Aimpoint micro footprint. Oh, cool. So Good if you want to throw that on a scalar works or something, knock yourself out, dude. Good on them. You know? Smart. Um, so that's pretty cool. I will also, just as an honorable mention, say that uh, I wanted to run this because this was new and I hadn't run that before. Yeah. But uh, we've also done a full video on this. It's the 1X Micro Prism from Primary Arms. I will tell you, despite this not actually being a dot, it's actually really a, it's a 1X Micro Prism. It's like a tiny scope that just doesn't have magnification. Uh, this is actually a really good optic that you can also use as a red dot because it has just enormously forgiving eye relief. So this would be another one of those that like, Hey, between these two, you sure. got two good options here. Sure. You could go either way. They're roughly the same price. I think this is maybe like 250 or something like that. Okay. But yeah, pretty, I mean, really at 200 bucks, I got to admit, I've actually been very pleasantly surprised at 200 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, moving on. All right, Jake, next up we got the, and we've done dedicated video on this. Yes. Um, the lead and steel Promethean. Yes. LP1. Yes. Okay. Um, this one's a little sentimental and special to my heart. Because it has 1911 Syndicate engraved on there. Just a bunch of sweethearts over Kinda there. Kind of cool, right? Ahmad, you're the man. Go ahead and hold that for me. Thank you, sir. Price on these from their website. We got two different prices, 350 and 375 Could you tell me why there'd be two different prices, Jake? I got no freaking clue. One of them, 375 has the Shake Awake feature. One of them, if you feel you don't need it, is 350 You can save a couple bucks. So. Boy, what a... I actually like the option. Great. Yeah. I, you know, I don't care for the shake awake it doesn't really bother me yeah, so i leave all my bucks. dots on yeah, yeah save some bucks that pays for shipping right yeah. so we got a two moa dot or we can do the 65 moa donor to death if you'd like to yeah which is what you've got is that what's on there yeah oh i typically just run a dot so that's interesting that that's on there so must have got uh did you just do that now no oh cool hey it's been like that all oh day. i know why i know why i was letting my uncle run this for a while and he liked the donut that's why so there you go um, window, 1.375 by 1.04, okay? Weight, 12.5 ounces, but without the sacrificial hood here, we can shave a little bit of weight and come in at 11.8 ounces. Yeah. So you can, uh, you can shave some of the weight if you would like. Sacrificial hood. Yep, which I was gonna mention later, but sacrificial hood. So this little portion right here bolts on, or you can take it off if you'd like, 
and it just prevents from direct contact hitting the actual housing of the red dot. Sure. And we should also note that, I mean, all the other weights we've given are without a mount and that weight's including a mount. Correct. Yeah. Well, that's, you're getting, you're getting really ahead of me now. Oh. Um, we'll come to that. So uh, we have 0 0.05 MOA windage and elevation adjustments, which I like because you can really fine tune stuff. Not that your vision is even capable of doing that, but I like knowing that I can really fine tune it if I got a gun vice or something like that, mm -hmm. right? Powered by a single CR123A battery, touting 60,000 hours of continuous run, t run time. With the CQB reticle, we're at 150,000 hours, okay? Hang on, say that one more time. Or sorry. You're with, backwards, With just the dot, 150,000 hours. With the CQB reticle, donor to death, you're at 60,000 hours. Sure. My bad, sorry. Mix the two. And that's uh, that's on setting five out of 10. Yeah, which is virtually those. unusable. Yep, so. Um, it does come with night vision settings. Some people would like, don't really think it's necessary. Um, now, much like you jumped ahead, it comes with its own mount and its own footprint, okay? So the mount is built in, and actually this is not the final mount, the newest version. Jake actually had a hand in designing a little bit. <laughs> I'm using that loosely. <laughs> very loose, very loose. He just said, I don't like it. And they said, we'll change it. So <laughs> I <laughs> I have zero issue with the standard one. Yeah. Um, I think your complaints were because you're a pussy, but a little neither harsh. Here, neither here nor there. I got a new gen, uh, uh, the new one that just came in actually. So we'll, we'll see what it is. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, cool, cool. Um, also comes with a lifetime warranty for the OG purchaser. So that okay. doesn't transfer, which is okay. Um, and that was on their site, which is why I felt like including it. So, okay. Um, thoughts on this. Uh, no thoughts have changed since the original video, which you guys should go uh, take a look at. We might even link that below in the description. But um, it's a great red dot. It's a great price. Uh, we said in that video, and I'll say it the same, just because you haven't heard of this company doesn't mean they're not making good products. Yeah. I think they're starting to become a little more popular. There's some other influencers that I know that run them. And um, I think that for the price, for the what you're getting, the adjustments, the hood, night vision settings, runtime, I think for the price, it's probably one of the top ones on the on yeah. the seven, in yeah. my opinion. Well, look at it like this. I just picked up another one. Yeah. Like, you think I picked up another one because I hate it? Yeah. Like, no. Like, picked up another one because I like it. Because you like it. Yeah. So, um, I'm a big fan of the red dots like the Leupold LCO. Yeah. This is very similar, like, size, shape, footprint, all that kind of stuff. Massive window. So, Huge massive window. window. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, I think it's a great option. Um, I... I think that, you know, at one point, Aimpoint was a new company that people hadn't really heard of or trusted. This could be similar to that. I'm telling you right now, it's ran fine for both of us to the point where Jake's bought another one. So, there you go. Right on. Next stop. Okay, number seven, the big finale. Something uh, you guys probably don't see because I'd never really seen it. It's from across uh, the pond. Yeah, it's across the pond. It's a German company called Falk. Uh, I think that's how you say it. Falk. Falk. Yeah. Uh, and this is the Falk. LE, uh, which I think stands for law enforcement, but I'm not entirely sure. Their site is not the most descriptive thing in the world. So it's a German company, the MSRP, uh, they list in a foreign currency. As my best guess is the MSRP is about $400 uh, and the street price seems to be about 280. So it is relatively inexpensive. So let's talk about a few things. They say on their site, I'm not saying anything that they don't say themselves, it is uh, made for the most demanding requirements even under extreme conditions. They use language that Chris and I might have to litigate here because I think we might have differing opinions of this. They say it has sealed electronics, okay? Which I interpret to be closed emitter. Would that be how you would interpret the, the phrase sealed electronics? No. But after taking a look at this, playing with it a little bit, sealed electronics might be their way of saying closed emitter because I this, think I think that's what they're intending to this say. This is closed off. There is glass in front of the emitter. It is open to the window. So it could I'm calling that an open emitter, man. Yeah. Okay, so do this. Look, okay, look, look at the dot. Okay. Okay. Now let's say that I am rain or I am dust or snow. Where's your dot? I can see your finger. Where's the dot though? Oh, no dot. Oh, there. No, oh, no. Yep. Yep. Is yep. it going kind of in and out? It is. It's an open emitter. It's an open emitter. The electronics can be sealed all they want, but if a raindrop hits the lens, then the dot's gone. It's an open emitter. Like we're playing in like, 
hyperbole, like, you know, semantics here. It's like, so, well, of course the electronics are sealed. What if we just think there's gonna be wires hanging out of the side of this? Sure. No, of course, no, that wouldn't happen. But it's like, yeah, the electronics can be sealed all, all they want. It's an open emitter. Now, I'm not shitting on it because it's an open emitter. I'm just saying it's confusing because you're trying to words. figure out what exactly is this. I'm calling it, it's like a Holosun 510, which is okay. a, just a big, you know, big open emitter dot. But the 510 doesn't have a piece of glass in front of the dot, it's just open. Sure. So. But the same thing happens, which is it gets obscured. I'm not, I'm not arguing that. You, you know, yeah. have I had it get obscured yet? No, I haven't. No. So I'm not even criticizing it for being open. I will say though, if we're gonna say it's made for the most demanding requirements, even under extreme conditions, like what, rain? Well, that, yeah, maybe it doesn't rain in Europe, so I don't, you know. I've been in Europe and it rains and it snows. <laughs> and so it's like, hey, if we're gonna say it's made for like the, the harshest conditions, like, hey, a piece of dirt hitting the window and now you don't have a dot, I can't call that, it's made for the most extreme conditions. You know, it's like, well, no, hmm. no, it can be fine, but it would be fine for more of like range use or, you know, duty use, can't really get on board with that. Would you argue a Trijicon RMR is duty use? Um. For a, uh, I would say it historically has been, I'd say it's fading a little because of the, the use of now closed emitter red dots for pistols. But at one point, you would consider that a due to use red dot? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it was the gold standard for pistol red dot for duty. And rifle. Uh, People mount them to rifles, brother. They did. I always thought it was a little goofy, but Same. that's just me. Doesn't mean they didn't do it. You know, but that's a different, different thing for a different day. Uh, so the battery, I want you to complete the following. The battery is a CR. One, two, three, A. Nope. It's a CR. It's a CR2. What? <laughs> I had to look that up. I was like, hang on. I at some point I had to put the battery in this and I took it out. You know what a CR2 looks like? Is well, it the shorty little like chode batteries? Yes. So it's a battery I'd never even heard of prior to this. Yeah, I was like, like, what the hell's a CR2? It's like a one, two, three, A cut in half. It's a midget CR one, two, three, A. Oh, whoa. What? Watch it with the M word. It's you're not gonna, that offensive. You're going to offend some little people. A brother. CR2 is a shrunken down <laughs> CR123A. It's a stubby. Okay, It's a little stubby guy is, is what it is. One that might relax. have been worse. Um, well, you know, at some point you just got to say we're, we move on. Um, so if left on, because that is a shortened battery, if left on, your battery life is 42 days or 1,000 hours. <laughs> Well, that's not great. Um, that's not great battery life. So I would have to say, hey, that's not ideal. The reticle is an EOTech style reticle, right? 65 MOA, two MOA dot in the middle. So I don't have any issue with the reticle. It's pretty crisp, it's clean. 10 daylight settings, I'm on board with that. It does have some night vision settings. It has 10 night vision settings as well. Yeah, and I didn't quite understand that. Like, was that, and that's just what's Sorry. going on there, big guy? Oh, I just squoze the, it was, Squeeze the buttstock. Just My bad. squeezing shit yep. over here. My bad. Okay. Uh, 10 button night vision settings. Hey, just from a folk ever uh, sees this from an American consumer perspective, as guys who do run night vision, we don't need 10 night vision settings. Um, we don't even need one. Not but. really. It's a bit overkill. So just, hey, in the, in the event you're spending more in your electronics package to give us uh, 10 night vision settings, don't. Um, is is kind of where we're at there. It does come with a uh, this pick rail mount so you can run it on a Unity mount. So basically it's like a lower one third and then if you wanted to bump it up, throw it on a Unity or something okay. like that. Is it an optic I could really get on board for like duty use, hard use? Not really. I haven't had any issues with it, but I could just tell you there would be a limitation to how far I would want to push that based on environmental concerns, battery life, things like that. Hmm. You know, that's where I'm at. Is it bad? No. Would I necessarily go out and spend my money on it? I probably would not. Okay. You know? Cool. So that's about uh, seven freaking red dots under 500 bucks. I know it's probably a long video here. We hope maybe you guys got a couple little nuggets out of yeah, this. Yeah, sure. I think it's great. Yeah. And cool. uh, I guess we'll just wrap it up with, hey, whatever red dot you run, hopefully you never need to use the damn thing other than on a piece of cardboard. But if you do... I would hope that you follow our advice and get yourself firearms legal protection, which is concealed carry self-defense insurance. Yep, it's advised. Why is that important? Because the world's getting a little weird. And heaven forbid you're in a scenario with your red dot and you gotta, you know, defend your life or your loved ones, you probably want some insurance for that. It they got a advised. couple different packages. Yes. Okay? They got, you know, the single guy package. Yeah, which is of, smaller. Yep. Yeah. Mid-tier package, then my package covers my wife as well as I travel. Yes, it's so, bigger. Yep. Yeah. Um, we do have a code for you on that. We're at uh, 1911. 
at checkout. It'll save you about a third off. Yeah. And I uh, want to thank the boys at FLP. Cool. Check them out. Uh, drop us uh, comments if you got anything you want to ask about any of these. We'll uh, give you some answers down there. And yep. uh, yeah, we appreciate it. We'll see you guys next time. Take care, gents.